Hey there, welcome you all for our next connecting video of the learning of pharmacology that is fibrinolytics. We'll deal today with fibrinolytics pharmacology. Fibrinolysis is the process in which there will be breakdown of fibrin in the blood clots. This is for already formed clots. It has two types. Primary fibrinolysis, which is a normal uh, body process where the already formed blood clot will get dissolved and uh, inside the blood. And secondary fibrinolysis, the breakdown of clots has to be taken place due to medicine, disorder or any other cause. And for this purpose, in our body, there is a plasmin, proteinaceous material plasmin present, which has the ability to break the specific bonds in the fibrin polymers. Let's see what is the role of Plasmin. Plasmin in a body plays a very important role. First of all, one should know that it is present in an inactivated form that is plasminogen. It is present in the form of plasminogen. In the clot process, we have seen in a previous video lecture of anticoagulants and coagulants, how the intrinsic and extrinsic activity takes place and the factor 10A, which is common from both the factors, comes over here. And this activated factor 10A along with prothrombin S converts the prothrombin to thrombin and this thrombin in turn activates the fibrinogen to fiber, fibrin. At the time when there will be fibrin formation and the fibrin comes over to the pl platelet aggregates to form the clot, the plasminogen also accompanies the fibrin but it remains in inactivated form. When the clot is formed and the wound injury is healed at that time in the body there is a two factors which activate this plasminogen that is the tissue plasminogen activator and the urokinase these two things they activate the plasminogen so that it gets converted into active form that is plasmin this plasmin now starts breaking down the fibrin material opens up the clot and forms degradation products along with degradation products it lacks in selectivity it also digests the factor 5 factor 7 factor 2 and factor 12 in uh, the series that means that it is lacking the selectivity for fibrin and it may interfere in the normal coagulation process this uh, diagrammatic representation is obtained from the medicosis of uh, professionalists we are thankful to them for this uh, one uh, systematic explanation of the process and now we'll take help of uh, a video clip uh, obtained from no, obtained from uh, the non-stop neuron which will help us in reading and learning the fibrinolysis process we'll see how it takes place the fibrinolysis this video clip will explain us at the site of injury over here there is a clot formation this clot formation is causing with uh, by platelet aggregation and the fibrin material along with the fibrin plasminogen is also coming over here but this is an inactivated form plasminogen rely over in the clot itself when the clot is formed and injury is now healed the wound has been healed from external endothelial cells now the what will happen to this clot is uh, by the body itself our body will cause its further removal from the site. The serum will get liberated, which lacks the clotting factors. It gets liberated inside our body. Uh, it oozes out from the clot itself. But what about the uh, thrombotic clotic material, which is present on the site? This uh, we can see over here how the uh, tissue is repaired now. Now we'll see the fate of the clot. In the clot, in our body, there is a tissue plasminogen activator present. This tissue plasminogen activator has a tendency to cause activation of plasminogen. This tissue uh, 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 plasminogen activator along with urokinase, which is liberated at the time of inflammation or any extravascular fibrinolysis, causes the activation of plasminogen. This tissue plasminogen activator now binds with the fibrin at the site of lysine and activates the plasminogen. On activation, this plasmin starts breaking the fibrin. When the fibrin is broken down and fibrin degradation products are obtained, the clot is now liberated and later it gets dissolved in a blood and it by the process of uh, phagocytosis it is removed over so this is how the primary fibrinolysis takes place now we'll move ahead 
the how the regulation takes place the process of fibrinolysis this was the clot retraction that how the clot is actually removed by pri primary uh, defense of our body now we'll see how actually the fibrinolysis is regulated what are the aspects of fibrinolysis in our body this is again obtained from non stop neuron we are thankful to them for this wonderful creation now what is happening the tissue plasmin activator it goes towards the fibrinogen uh, and it causes activator but there are also plasminogen activator inhibitors present which acts against the tissue plasmin activator uh, during uh, in open uh, uh, means during when there will be no clot in our body this tissue plasmin activators will be blocked by the inhibitors these are also secreted from placenta plasminogen activator inhibitor 2 and one is already found in the normal body also there are alpha 2 anti plasmin bodies which are liberated from the kidneys of our uh, bodily functions this alpha 2 anti plasmin also binds with the active plasmin so that there will be no um, uh, action of plasmin over the clots or the fibrin material which are present this is the normal mechanism but when there will be a clot after the clot formation this tissue plasmin activator as we have seen in the previous video clip it will uh, bind with the fibrin and it activates the plasminogen so that this plasmin will get activated and starts uh, breaking down the fibrin when the plasmin is activated and it is inside the clot it will be not be affected by alpha 2 anti plasmin alpha 2 anti plasmin could not um, cause any uh, inhibitory action over the plasmin at this site so in the inside the clot this plasmin uh, shows its action when the clot is dissolved at that time this plasmin is getting uh, attached with the alpha anti plasmin 2 so this plasmin activity is increased in the fibrin when there will be no fibrin this plasmin activity will be minimal so this is the process how the fibrinolysis is regulated with the clot and without the clot so we'll move ahead uh, from this what are fibrinolytics fibrinolytics are the agents which will be breaking down the already formed clot or thrombus which is formed uh, one thing we should remember very clearly the, there is a difference between the anticoagulants there is a difference between fibrinolytics and there is a difference between antiplatelets what the anticoagulants were doing they were in the previous video which we have discussed they were not allowing the clot to form by uh, showing its action against the clotting factors factor 10a inhibitors then also there was uh, warfarin heparin which we have seen in early lecture so they were acting in the coagulation now the fibrinolytics already formed clot it has to be broken down this work is done by the fibrinolytics they will do the breakdown of uh, the fibrin uh, the already formed clot and what the antiplatelet drugs will be doing we will see in our coming lecture coming video in the series so the fibrinolytic drugs these includes streptokinase anastreplase urokinase and tissue plasminogen activators the examples of this category are altiplase retiplase and tenecteplase we'll begin with the common mechanism of action mechanism of these drugs is commonly by directly or indirectly it causes conversion of this plasminogen to plasmin there is a conversion of plasminogen to plasmin by direct or indirect action of streptokinase urokinase and all the tissue plasminogen activator drugs we will see one by one how directly or how indirectly this uh, changes takes place and on activation this plasmin causes the breaking down or lysis of the fibrin material so that fibrin products are liberated we'll see one by one how their action is starting with uh, beginning with the uh, action of individual drugs first we will see the uses of this category that is including acute myocardial infarction acute thrombotic stroke peripheral artery occlusion pulmonary embolism and deep venous thrombosis these are the pathological con physiopathological conditions against which the fibrinolytics are used clinically we'll begin with streptokinase the name itself is suggesting that it is coming from the source of uh, streptokinase streptococci which is a beta hemolytic streptococci it is a beta hemolytic streptococci which has a tendency to break down the heme by the name itself it is suggesting so it is indirectly activates the plasminogen 
how indirectly it will be activating it will first form one to one complex with the plasminogen after forming this complex with plasminogen then it will show its action of uh, getting uh, activated by the plasmin and then it will cut down the fibrin material so it is a indirectly acting uh, drug uh, over here we will see it's we uh, animated uh, we, um, animated mechanism of streptokinase which is again obtained from the non stop neuron the streptokinase it is the first line first fibrinolytic which is developed it is developed from beta hemolytic streptococci this streptokinase what does it do how it acts we'll see in the clot formation and at the site of fibrin this streptokinase it binds with the plasminogen and it opens it up to break down the uh, inactivation of plasminogen so this is the indirect action now the inactivated plasminogen will go at the lysine site of uh, fibrin and then it will form breakdown of fibers so as it forms first complex with the plasminogen which is present in the blood then it reaches to the clot where it activates the already present plasminogen and then it causes breakdown of fibrin and the normal uh, material is um, normal c or, or normal function of the blood in the blood vessels are seen drawback drawback of streptokinase ar it is not fibrin specific the very first drawback it causes breakdown of fibrin plugs as well as uh, fibrinogen and clotting factors 5 and 7 thus it increases the risk of hemorrhage it cannot be given to the patients who have suffered within one year with the infection of streptococci so these are the two major drawbacks of streptokinase now the next category drug is urokinase urokinase is also present in our body as we have, we have seen along with tissue plasminogen activator this urokinase it is previously it was isolated from human urine but nowadays it can be cultured human renal cells can uh, be providing the urokinase drug it is a potent direct plasminogen activator it directly cleaves with the arginine valine bond of plasminogen there and it lyses the fibrin unlike to the streptokinase what the streptokinase was doing it was binding with the plasminogen which was available freely in the blood that complex was coming inside the clot and activating the already present plasminogen and urokinase what it is doing it will be directly going to the uh, clot and it will be binding with the plasminogen present over here this drug was used uh, for treating the blood deposits in the anterior chamber of the eye clinically so we'll see the mechanism of action obtained from the non stop neuron uh, the urokinase obtained from those two sources previously human urine now the cultured human kidney cells this urokinase is going to directly go and bind with the arginine valine bond of the plasminogen it will be by uh, getting it activated to form the plasmin and then it will be going to break down the fibers so this is the very simple mechanism of action of urokinase now anestreplase anestreplase is an acylated form of streptokinase plasminogen complex it is working indirectly by the same track it causes acylation uh, which makes the complex temporarily inactive after dl acylation the streptokinase plasminogen complex promotes thrombolysis by speeding the conversion of uh, plasminogen to plasmin so again uh, it is one of the indirectly acting drug then the next is uh aspect of anestreptylase uh, uh then the next is tissue plasminogen activators tissue plasminogen activators that includes altiplase retiplase tenactiplase these are uh plasminogen activators which are working by activating the uh, tissue plasminogen and showing its action directly altiplase is a serine protease it is a serine protease originally derived from cultured human melanoma cells now obtained as a product of recombinant dna technology it has low affinity for free plasminogen in the plasma unlikely to the streptokinase the streptokinase was binding to the free plasminogen in the plasma and then it was coming to the clot but these tissue uh, artiplase and other uh, tissue plasminogen activators they directly go uh, to the clot plasminogen they have uh, they don't have affinity for free plasminogen the so retiplase and tenactiplase are also genetically engineered recombinant tissue plasminogen activators with the help of a, a short video clip provided by the non stop neuron we will see how the altiplase retiplase and tenactiplase they exactly work 
similarly to that of the urokinase they will uh, be acting but they are tissue plasminogen activator recombinant technology they will uh, uh, act accordingly the alteplase is a tissue plasminogen activator with recombinant technology and retiplase and tenetoplase these are modified from the same recombinant technology but they are having longer half, uh, half life they don't have their affinity for freely having plasminogen like streptokinase but they again bind with the lysine residue in the fibrin they open up uh, the activation of uh, plasminogen on activation the plasminogen getting converted to plasmin and breaking the clot this is how the tissue plasminogen activators work. Now we'll see the overall summary of all the fibrinolytics mechanism. This overall summary will show us how the plasminogen is getting converted to plasmin by both extrinsic and intrinsic factors. We will see how the activators work, activators which are working in the positive direction of uh, the uh, conversion of plasminogen to plasmin the extrinsic one streptokinase urokinase and the drugs these are the drugs actually the recombinant dna technology uh, modified tissue plasminogen activators that is the alteplase telectiplase which we have studied uh, these are extrinsic factors and the intrinsic factors which includes factor 12a calicrin and the tissue plasminogen activators these all together have a tendency to uh, positively stimulate the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. And this converted plasmin will cause the insoluble fibrin to form a soluble fibrin or it breaks down the fibrin and the clot is broken down. At the same time, there are inhibitors which are working against this conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Certain factors are there which will not allow the plasmin to be activated and those are the anticoagulant drugs which we have seen in a previous video that is epsilon amino caproic acid that is ESEA, tranexamic acid and erproteinine which are the anticoagulant agents. They are also having a tendency to not allow the conversion of plasminogen to plasmin. Then alpha-2 antiplasmin and alpha-2 macroglobulin, such material are also there which binds with the uh, plasmin so that it remains inactivated. And this, it, they block the conversion of the insoluble fibrin to the soluble one and dissolution of this uh, material of clot in the blood. So this is the overall summary of the uh, process of fibrin lysis and their intrinsic and extrinsic factors. Now the adverse reactions. The adverse reactions of this fibrinolytics are detailed uh, aminomic is given as HAM-BH. This HAM-BH stands for H hypotension which is a decrease in blood pressure then allergic reactions are seen then uh, multiple microemboli are formed as the uh, clot is broken down and the fire thrombosis is broken down there is multiple microemboli form then bleeding can take place as uh, we have seen that these drugs are having uh, non specificity uh, towards uh, the clotting factors like streptokinase uh, they have non specificity they can dissolve the factor uh, 5 and factor 7 and 2 so they may lead to hemorrhagic conditions so this is the uh, uh, drawback or the adverse reaction like bleeding can occur and the last one hemorrhagic stroke as hemorrhage can take place the hemorrhagic stroke is also one of the severe adverse reactions of fibrinolytics so with this, I thank you all uh, to be uh, patient listening for uh, fibrinolytics. Hope to see you all soon um, in our coming videos where we will be studying uh, more about uh, the uh, agents which are uh, interfering with the blood and blood mechanism and the hemostasis. So with this, I take a leave from you and uh, please subscribe the channel for the future uh, videos and stay tuned. Bye.